welcome to Hedwig's Army. Hosted and produced by Josh Clayton and Trevor Feldman. I strongly swear that I'm up to no good. Hello everyone. If you're a new listener, welcome. And if you are a returning listener, welcome back. I'm Josh. I'm Trevor. And today we're going to go over chapter 14, Norbert the Norwegian Ridgeback. Yep, we are. So make sure you are brushed up on your dragon knowledge and that you're not hiding any eggs underneath your, inside of your fire pit. Okay. <laughs> um, as I said in the previous episode, we are... Recording this approximately seven minutes after uh, wrapping up <laughs> chapter 13. So I do not have any different weekly knowledge if you want, or weekly news. If you want to go back and listen to that weekly news, if you have not already heard it, make sure to check out chapter 13. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything to go over because I went over it last episode. So I guess we're just going to dive right straight into this one. It's a pretty short chapter, considering. Yeah, it's probably going to be a short episode, guys. I mean, it's a pretty short chapter, so... I think this is... Uh, there's only been, like, maybe one or two other chapters that have been even close to the, as yeah. short as this one. When we say short, I'm not talking about page-wise. I'm just saying there's a lot of I mean, page-wise, too, but... There's just so much description that's not worth going over. Like, it's just... There's nothing to go over. So, it's just... Like, in terms of actual things happening, it's just not that much. So, we're just going to kind of go over what does happen. I mean, there's some interesting things that happen. It's just kind of like boom, 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 bada bing, bada boom, done. Uh, <laughs> you know? So, oh I'm just going to jump in straight away with my chapter 14 little synapses. Um, Quirrell was holding his ground. No, this is coming straight from Quirrell and Snape in the woods of last chapter, kind of going back and forth. So Quirrell was holding his ground against Snape and Hermione was back to her nerdy ways. The trio was stuck in the library studying, but Ron only wants to be outside. The trio sees Hagrid acting suspicious in the library and realized he was looking up books about dragons. After speaking with him about the Sorcerer's Stone, they agree to meet him later at his house. Upon arriving at his hut, Hagrid revealed that Sprout, Flitwick, McGonagall, Quirrell, and Snape all had a part in protecting the stone. They finally discover that Hagrid has a dragon egg. Uh, then, one morning after Hagrid sent a message to Harry telling him that the egg was hatching, Malfoy overheard the trio discussing the dragon. The trio the trio hunted to Hagrid's hut and watched the dragon Norbert hatch. While talking with Hagrid, they see Malfoy peeking through the window. Hagrid writes to Charlie, whom agrees to have his friends of or friends of his pick up Norbert. While Ron was in the hospital wing with a swollen hand, he had lent Malfoy a school book with Charlie's note in it. Saturday came and Harry and Ron picked up Norbert to bring him to Charlie's friends. On the way there, they saw Malfoy get busted by McGonagall. And on their way back to the common room, they accidentally left the invisibility cloak behind and got busted by Filch. Alright, one problem. What? That he didn't lend Mal- Malfoy his school book. Malfoy took the school book. Okay, from same thing. He what? went in there saying, I need a school book, and took it from, whatever. He took it from Ron. Ron's like, here, you know, take this. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, so like you said, starts off, Coral seems to be holding his own pretty pretty well. Or so we think. Um, and they got, the gang tries everything to keep people from making fun of him. Um but Hermione seems like she's got more focus on her, more important things on her mind, i.e. the exams. So the exams are ten weeks away. She's stressing about it. She's <laughs> she's definitely, like you said, letting her nerdy side show. Um, of course, the guys are like, uh, "We what? It's ten weeks." She's like, well, that'll be sooner yeah. than you think. And yeah, she's uh, 
coming up with schedules and color coding Four things. And, and dear gosh, if if we all had a her, Hermione, yeah, Hermione's um, right diligence, I guess would be a good way of putting it. Uh, Work ethic, y- yeah. Um, right. There would be like nobody failing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> she like, is a good friend, though. I mean, I know they see it as nerdy and annoying, but like. She's the only reason sometime. they even make it through six years. She even, uh, which is interesting because uh, I don't know if it gets referenced anymore. Uh, she references how they uh, they have to pass these exams to get to the next year. Like, I wonder what happens mm-hmm. if you don't pass the exam. Do you just, you just you're a second year done. I guess you mean, you mean a first year? Or yeah, but I was, I was, yeah, first year. I was just staying in a grade. But yeah, it would be really sucky, <laughs> right? Because yeah. hopefully you would. Remember everything. Yeah, I don't really know what happens. Maybe their standards are a little bit lower. I don't know. It's a good question. Right. Or just to see at them and they don't actually fail any kids because they're like, F it. I mean, it's a good question. Um, so. Well, they're, she and the boys are at the library trying to study. They come across Hagrid trying to hide something. Looks super suspicious. Uh, he questions what they're doing. And uh, he says, looking for Nicholas Samo. Ron replies, and he's not quiet about this. He says that they found out about him ages ago. Um, at which point, you know, of course, Hagrid cuts him off and is like, hey, hey, whoa, whoa. We could talk about this. I don't think I have any information for you. But if you want to talk about this, let's do this at my hut. Um, so he leaves. Real quick, I just want to cut in. Uh, before. While they're in the library and they, they're looking out, he's like longingly looking out the window. I have no idea what inside of me possessed me to remember this, but he describes the the um the sky as forget me new forget me not blue, mm-hmm. and for some reason, just all the Harry Potter knowledge in my brain decided that this sounded like something used to describe Lockhart. So I looked it up, and in Chamber of Secrets. One of the first times Lockhart is like described, he's this, his robes are described described as forget me not blue. I just thought that was hilarious because something inside of me was just like that sounds like a Lockhart thing. Yeah. And I like I said I usually don't pay that much attention. Like yeah, I, I read, but I don't pay that much attention to the descriptions when I'm making my notes and stuff. I'm like whatever, it's just describing things. You know, they're just place fillers. But I thought that was interesting that she used that very specific color twice within like two books. Well, we know that, like, she wasn't in the greatest place, I think, when she was writing these books. So maybe, like, that was something to, like, try to cheer right. her up or something. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I just, it, was just, it was just interesting that, I don't know. Like oh, I yeah, said, no, it's a, like it's I said, a, I have no idea why I know that. It just rang a bell, and I was like, I'm going to make a note of as that. As soon as you were talking about it, like, I was like, oh, hey, yeah. Forget me not that. blue. It's just a very interesting color to, like, use twice within two books. Right, and two books back to back. Um, so, of course, Hagrid's like, Meet me at my hut. Um, when he leaves, um, you know the t- the guy the gang go over and they're investigating. Like, what was he looking at? Ron notices. Oh, that's all about dragons. <laughs> yeah. And um, you know, obviously Harry. I mean, he thinks about it, but it, like doesn't really cross his mind. And Ron's like, well, "That's illegal. You can't. There's rules against that." And it's like, "Oh." Of course, that there sucks. Are. Right, <laughs> and of course there are there dragons. Like, um, but have he, you seen dragons roaming around? <laughs> right, and Ron kind of gives him the description, like, yeah, like it's illegal to have them because it's hard to keep from muggles from seeing. There's a whole team, and like, well, Harry was like, well, aren't there still dragons? And Ron's like, oh yeah, yeah, there's dragons in England. Yeah. It's just, you know, we have yeah, to keep memory far from stuff. muggles. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when they see them, we have to keep memory charms. Right. Like that. Um, yeah, it's hard to keep them hidden. <laughs> and he says... Kind of like this, with the giants, if you think about it. The giants are kept in the mountains so that they don't cross muggles and stuff. Right. And, I mean, it's kind of for their own safety, too. Well, yeah, their own safety, but also, like, you know, they don't want... They don't want them roaming around muggles because, A, they don't want muggles dead, and, B, they don't want memory charms galore to have to be sent out, you know? Right, yeah. Because, you know, not every day that Muggle sees a giant, so. And this is where we find out about Charlie, because Ron's like, oh, hey, yeah, my brother, he works in Romania um, with dragons and stuff. And we're like, oh, okay, 
Ukraine, um, which is interesting because I mean, technically it's illegal, so I don't know what they're doing except for like maybe keeping them from Russia somewhere. Well, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure that there's some like some th- like a dragon hold or something that they. Keep well, I don't know. God, I should have looked it up better, but I don't. There's probably something they debt the ministry or that man, you know, that the wizards do with dragons that they need dragons for. But they probably need Dragon's them like heartstring. Yeah, like blood. right, like they need, but they need. Yeah, obviously they need tra- people to train them and keep them in line. Not train them, but like to watch them, keep them in line. Right. You know, like in three books, we'll see that <laughs> come into play. Oh yeah, actually that brings up a good point. Um, I believe in book four, don't we have? Um, isn't there a Norwegian Ridgeback in there? Yeah, I think so. Which uh, is, is there? The Chinese Fireball, Hungarian Horntail. Um, I'll look it up. Go ahead. Well, he's looking that up. Um, they realize when they get to Hagrid's hut because they go down there. They realize two things: one, it's very warm in in the hut, and that's saying something because it's warm outside to begin with. So why is it even warmer in here? Um, and Two, um, after they're talking to him, so he realizes that there's a dragon egg in the fireplace. Right. So it's a uh, common Welsh green, Hungarian horned tail, Swedish snort, short snout, and Chinese fireball. Ah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, been, no Norwegian witchback. Norwegian witchback. Because it would have been interesting. Oh, yeah, that's a call back or a call forward to. Right. You know, I wish, but now, unfortunately. Um, Hagrid tells him, "Hey, I want it uh, when he out, went out drinking." This is like the fourth time we've seen or heard about Hagrid drinking. I think I think that's yeah, calling it the fourth time is odd. Uh, is sincere? Like I think it's been more than that. I think that's uh, yeah. yeah. It's showing that Hagrid yeah. has. I've said this before. Hagrid top five of top six seven. Okay. Top care top five characters. I would say I'd throw him in there. Top five character. Um, he's, he's a drunk. He just says he's a drunk. He's an alcoholic. Hagrid's an alcoholic. He's had a sh- crappy life. Don't get me wrong. I'm as not, a kid, I didn't realize that. But like looking back as an yeah, adult, you're like, God, he, that's he, like the he, fourth he time. Can't he's... stop drinking. I, I love Hagrid, but he's got a problem. <laughs> that's like the. F- and you know, it's kind of sad that nobody like mentioned. like points it out and helps him out. And none of his friends are like, Hey, maybe you should just stop drinking because you're always like. First Man. of all, everything that happens bad is usually when you're drunk, <laughs> and you always drink. Yeah, well, he drinks, and he doesn't just just drink. He like drinks to excess, yeah. like leaves hair. Like the first time he's with Harry, you know, in Diagon Alley, leaves him to go get right, right. assumed wasted. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Even if he's not always completely drunk and wasted, like he just can't not have. <laughs> you're drink. about to say what I think you were gonna yeah. say. <laughs> if he's not always drunk and wasted, then he. <laughs> There's at least having a drink at least once a day, I would say, probably. Well, and then, like, the, at Christmas, gets super drunk, gets some McGonagall. Yeah. Granted, McGonagall was drunk at the time. Yeah, probably, I mean, so I would she... say at least probably a third or fourth of every chapter we hear about Hagrid either drinking or having or being drunk. Which, like, scares me a little bit. Like, again, I know she was, like, in a dark place when she was, like, about to write well, these books. Well, I don't know but, if she's like... in a dark place here. She's in a dark place in book three. I think it's just. She's wrote that at Hagrid's character. Like, that's what he is, you know? I mean... It's just like... He okay. gets his personality. I mean, that's like, I still love Hagrid. Don't get me wrong. He's top five characters, but he does just, have an alcohol problem. It's and just like, sad to it's say. Sad nobody <laughs> was like, hey, Hagrid, maybe you put the booze down, bro. Uh, it's going to suck even worse when you find out, like... You know, to find out about the... Um, the dragon in the fireplace. The dragon egg. Uh, one at drinking... Uh, they also talk about the quarter and what's behind it and whatnot, uh, besides Fluffy. And like you said, they find out that it's McGonagall, Coral, Snape, uh, Sprout, Sprout. Flitwick. So, yeah. And yeah. Dumbledore is somewhere in the mix. No. Yeah. He says that Dumbledore has something. Well, Dumbledore is the mirror. I'm pretty sure. Right, but at the time we don't know that. Right. Uh, he doesn't he just, say like, Dumbledore in, in the book. Yeah. He doesn't. I don't think he says Dumbledore as a part in it at all. He says he list. I literally wrote down as he listed him. 
Ooh. It was McGonagall, Flitwick. I mean, yeah, it's... Oh, yeah. Uh, Professor Sprout, Flitwick, McGonagall, Professor Quirrell, and Dumbledore had... Uh, himself did something, of course. Hang on, okay. I've forgotten someone. Okay, oh, yeah, I guess Professor you're right. My bad. He does say Dumbledore did something, of course. Okay, you're right, you're right. Right, but we don't know that that's the mere... But... I mean, unless you, like, paid attention to foreshadowing, and you're like, oh... Right. That's why he had the mirror and he's moving it. Right. Well, yeah, I don't, again, I went over to Mirror of Errors, said why he didn't put it in there in the first place. I don't know if he just wasn't going to have a part in it or if he always planned on moving it. Well, I don't know. I don't know. But, but yeah. Um, so they find out, um, but that only, like, and they find out, they find out that, like, no one person knows more than whatever they did. They're not supposed to. Right. That the only person that knows everything is Dumbledore. Right. Of course. Or we assume that Dumbledore knows all of it. Well, yeah, he had to get I to don't... the end of it. Right. To put the mirror in. Um, and plus, it's Dumbledore. I'm sure he does. But, yeah, that, that's actually really smart. I like that. I like that a lot that they didn't let even the most trusted teachers know what the other one did. Other ones did. Like, keep it super safe. Right. Like, literally the only person that knows all of them is Dumbledore. That's interesting. I like that. It's a really good safe... You know, we, see, safe we, know how, we see how well that goes, but yeah. I mean, <laughs> it takes almost the whole school year for somebody to figure out all of them. Eleven-year-olds. No, no, Quirrell. Quirrell finds that first. Oh, yeah. But I'm saying it took... It literally took him almost the entire... Actually, up until like probably the last week or two to figure out... Right. Like, how to get past every single challenge. Right, but, yeah. Mainly, I wonder which one he got stuck on the most. Probably. Too bad he didn't drink the wrong potion for Snape's part. <laughs> uh, Wouldn't that be awkward? Yeah. Like, hey, what happened to Krill? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this is Krill. Was, uh, Maybe those vampires house. came back for him. Oh, wow. That's messed up. Um... As the weeks went by, they all realized that uh, Norbert can't stay with Hagrid. One, because yeah. Hagrid lives in a wooden hut, dragon breathes fire, uh, yeah. and two, the dra- Norbert is growing. Yeah, he's gonna be really bigger quick. than the hut. <laughs> and because Hagrid, you know, yeah, eventually like, Dumbledore's gonna walk by and be like, "Why is there a tail sticking out of Hagrid's window? What's what's going on?" <laughs> and honestly, I think this is the first time that we get introduced to Hagrid. Having some kind of creature that he is not supposed to have. Oh, um, uh, is it the first time? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it took. Goes really. dragon, then uh, Aragog. We find out about. Uh, and then yeah, there's, a out, there's a lot of them. There's a lot. Then we find out the hip Well, he's allowed to have stuff. him, but then he. I mean, he's not. He's not allowed to have him. Like, like uh, things that he's attached to. Right. But I think book four is like maybe the only book. I think that he doesn't have. Really? I mean, besides the dragons. No. Oh. He has the freaking... Well, it's not illegal, but he has the... um. How oh, is it? The, the, the thing. It's the scary looking things that the kids are afraid of and he puts it in the maze. Remember, Sphinx? he only ends up with one of them and he had like this for a class. Oh, I can't even name him. Go ahead. I'm going to look it up. Hmm. <sighs> It's the ba 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 ba. Oh okay. Well, we we've noticed that Hagrid. He, I think it's because he drinks a lot. He has questionable choices that he makes, both with pets and drinking. Um, find out that of course, to feed he needs, I believe it was brandy and something else's blood. Blast and then screw. Yeah. That's it. Oh, that was so terrible. Yeah. Hagrid has really bad. I'm going to post a picture of Blast on and Screwed on our Instagram as well. They're they're <laughs> terrifying. They're the, they're the thing of nightmares. <laughs> Have you ever seen one? No, oh, no. I'm, I'm going to keep going this, and I'll look up in a second. Um, so, since they realized, hey, that's creepy. <laughs> Look uh, at uh, it. Uh, no, I don't We're going to put a, not what I picked it at all. We're going to put it on our creepy. Instagram. Make That's sure to check creepy. it out. Um, 
Dear God, I need to stop looking at that. Um, Harry remembers, oh, hey, isn't, you know, he talks to Ron. He's like, what about Charlie? Of course, Ron, at first he's like, my name's Ron. <laughs> this is weird. Right. And Harry's like, no, 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 your brother. Can't he take Norbert? And right. Charlie's like, or, <laughs> Ron's like, his name's oh. Ron, not Charlie. Right. Ron's like, oh, yeah, yeah. So they contact Charlie. Couple weeks go by. Finally, they get a note, a letter back from him saying, "Hey, yeah, that's cool. Uh, I gotta re- arrange some stuff. Some buddies of mine are coming back from. I think they're on like a vacation or something. Uh, they'll be back soon. Right. Figured two weeks. Yeah. Meet they'll us. stop. Yeah. They'll stop. And Technically, we're not supposed over. to do this, so we have to meet somewhere secret. Right. Top of the astronomy tower. Yeah. I have s- my feelings about that. I'll go over at the end. Like I don't understand why they shouldn't go to Forbidden Forest, right. but you know, hey. You do you. Right. Um, um, real quick, I'm so sorry. Uh, I actually had a note here I meant to go over when we were talking about the uh, the protections on the for the Sorcerer's Stone. Yeah. Uh, so when he mentioned Snape, the trio are like shocked and awe. And that made me like, I, I, I questioned that because my, my thought is, okay, I don't understand why they're shocked about it. Because... Even if Snape is evil, he's obviously trying to portray himself as a good guy. Obviously, he's going to help Dumbledore protect the Sorcerer's Stone. Because, like, what's the worst case scenario? He puts a, a spell in there that he already knows how to complete anyway. Right. Like, it's not like he's, you know, like, actually, it's not going to be secure from him, his own potion. He knows which one to take. You yeah. know? He's the one to put him in there. So it's like, why are they, they're like super shocked. I can't believe that he's helping protect the stone. Like, yeah, he's obviously not like outright trying to steal it under Dumbledore's nose, even you if he was funny. the one. That's the one challenge that's missing. Yeah. Actually, no. No. One of two Corrales challenges. Is, yeah. One of two challenges that's missing in the movie. Yeah. We'll go into more detail when we get yeah, to that. Yeah, when we get that. Because that is coming up very, very quick. soon, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just like thought that that was, chapters. I just, I, that just doesn't make me question the trio. Like, like, he's obviously not an outright evil guy. He's going to... Even if he was the one behind it all, he's not outright trying to steal a stone under Dumbledore's face, you know? It's just... Cause he's I mean, obviously, stupid. he's going to play himself as the good guy. He's going to play his role. Yeah. He's so, I just wanted to point that out. Like, that's... Stuff like that, that's just, like... And that could just be easily chalked up to 11-year-old thoughts. Like, oh, my God, I can't believe he's the evil guy trying to help, you know? Right. Um, so they're supposed to meet in two weeks in the astro- at, at the top of the astronomy tower. Well, while they're talking about this, come to find out, Malfoy finds out. Right, because they're talking about it in class without no, Malfoy. No, actually in the Great Hall. Oh, in the Great Hall. Mel- are they? Somewhere, yeah. I don't remember where they are, but either way, yeah. Mel- you're talking about it in public, <laughs> where and anyone can overhear them. For whatever reason, doesn't know how to not Right. He's talk like loud. He's like me. Everyone's like, Josh, you're talking so loud. I'm like, well, I feel like I'm whispering, so... Like, Ron yeah. just can't control his volume. Of course, Malfoy overhears. Harry's like, how much did he hear? Mm, but a smirk on his face. Harry's like, he probably heard quite a bit. Um, and then also gets a letter from Hagrid saying, oh, hey. the Or no, 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 that's when they're getting that. No, my, my bad. That's when they're getting the letter from Hagrid saying it's hatching. Right. And Ron just, for whatever reason, like we said, can't keep his volume down. Malfoy overhears. They go down there. They're looking at Norbert like, dear God. Right, he's seeing as a monster. This literally. Huge. You can't keep right. this thing. Right. You live in a wooden hut. Yeah, my name's <laughs> bro. Your hut's made of wood. <laughs> Which, and, I mean, he's not magic. I could just put it out. And then not to use my Hagrid hand, so. realizes, oh crap, a student just looked through the window. Of course, saw the dragon. Right. Now they have this to deal with. Right. Which, let's not immediately get rid of the dragon. Let's continue waiting. Like, I feel like he could have done something about it, you know? Just, yeah. like, doesn't do anything about it. Well, and of course, you know, Hagrid's freaking out, as I would hope you would be if you thought you were going to get tattled on. Um, but it seems like Malfoy just holds back for whatever reason. I think he's, like, having something over the trio. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, they get the letter about, okay, well, we can't change two weeks because it's going to take more than two weeks for the letter to get there to change stuff. So there's no point. We just got to go through with this. And, right. and there's nothing they can really do, you know. Right. So on their way, 
you know, two weeks passes. And they're like, all right, tonight's the night. They go up there. Of course, they have the invisibility cloak. Uh, Ron, however, doesn't join them because uh, earlier that week, he was trying to help Hagrid with something. Got bit. Just so happens that Norwegian Ridgebacks are probably poisonous, so his finger starts swelling. His whole hand starts swelling. Well, at first it was his finger and right. his hand. So he has to go to Madame Pomfrey, who doesn't believe that it's a dog that bit him. <laughs> All right. Oh, but like, dog bit she you? just doesn't ask questions with this call. Yeah, she's like the cool nurse. She's, right. like, she's like, whatever, I'm just going to take care of you. She's like, I, I know on the DL that like you're straight up lying to me. But she I know what it care. is. Right, she just doesn't care. She's but like, I'm, I'm going to let it slide this time. She's like a patient for me. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I have work to do. Cool. <laughs> I ain't going to paint my bridges. All right. Burn yeah. my bridges. Uh, so they're, they're going up to the astronomy tower. It's just Hermione and uh, Harry. And they get up there. Well, you missed well, a crucial point. Well, before they get, like, right before they get up there, they notice. You missed a very crucial point about Malfoy getting the nuke. Oh. Tell me, because I, I, I. Malfoy, you're the one that yelled at me about it earlier, remember? Or you got on me about the note, the book. Oh, <laughs> I'm my like, bad. bro, that's the most important part of this whole story. My bad. Uh, Ron <laughs> points out that like he had a scuffle with Malfoy, and in said scuffle, um, Malfoy takes the book from him. Right. Well, that's why Malfoy was there. That's why they let him in, saying that he needed to borrow a book. Right. So, like, he had to leave with the book, otherwise they would know something's up. You know. So he got the book, but that's why I said Ron lent it to him. Obviously, I was being, oh, okay. I was being very laid back about it. But like Ron had to give him the book basically because he doesn't want Malfoy to tell. So he had to basically do what Malfoy said. And then Ron realizes while well, he's in the hospital, he's like, "Oh crap!" Has the note in it. Malfoy right. knows basically the whole plan. Yeah, the entire plan. When they're going, where they're going. So on their way to the astronomy tower, they run into Malfoy, but. Because they're under the invisibility cloak, they're like, "Hey, you can't see us!" Ha ha. He gets caught by Mouth or uh, by McGonagall, who is very, very upset. Like, the hell are you doing out here? Right. And Malfoy's like, "Oh, Harry Potter is gonna come up here with a dragon." And McGonagall's like, "No, twenty points from Slytherin, and you're gonna have detention." Right. Like, what blast something <laughs> is that? They're <laughs> spitting. <laughs> You dare bespir- besmirch the name of Harry Potter. Right. He is the... Detention. Oh, not yet, not yet. <laughs> He's the boy who lived. So they get up there. I don't know why. I mean, I kind of know why, but I don't know why they forgot. They get up there. They take the invisibility cloak off. Doesn't make a whole ho- heck of a lot of sense. Other than, like, Charlie's friends need to see them. They show oh, yeah. the harness that they're going to use to take Norbert. They take Norbert. Right. It's like, yay, bye, Norbert. Thank gosh. Don't think we ever get to hear from you ever again. It's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. Until we learn your female. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Norberta. Right, yeah. I totally forgot about that, yeah, actually. I didn't. Um, and then on their way down, for whatever reason, they forget. Which? The, see, that's what doesn't make sense to me. How do you forget? Like... It's the cover it's of It's not night. a jacket. You have to walk differently. You have to huddle together. It's probably got to have like a little bit of... It's not weight, but like you have to know that it's over your head. You know what I mean? Well, I think How do you just, just forget? Relieved, so relieved. That they're like, oh, we're I, I mean, I get that, but like you still have to like... Okay, it's still super dark. You still got to be like, okay, we still have to be careful and crouch. Then you'd be like, oh, wait, where's our invisibility cloak? They just start walking down like it's the middle of the day. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, and of course, while they're walking down, lo and behold... Catches them, but Filch. Of course. Who's and always Filch is there. Like, hey. Well, 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 we are in trouble. <laughs> He's like, hey. <laughs> Get, so, got him. <laughs> you mind explaining why you're out at night? He needs some help. <laughs> got him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I got him. Uh, that was so they get caught, and that's, that's where the chapter ends. Yeah. Well, I feel was, bad for them. That was a short chapter. I do, but I don't. I don't. Think, come on, guys. Although, also, I feel bad like, for them for my next note, but go on. Wait, go on. What's interesting is, I believe this is actually the same tower that later in the series... Oh, no, don't say it. Don't say it. 
Oh, what? say it, say it. Just, uh, it's gonna make me sad. Where Dumbledore uh, is killed. Uh, Dumbledore. And where the same, Dumbledore. In, the same invisibility cloak is used on Harry to keep him out of sight. Dumbledore. Well, Dumbledore dies. Oh, you're killing me, Smalls. Oh, God, I'm so sad now. I believe it's the same it's sure astronomy tower, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, there's only one astronomy tower, yeah. As far as I know, yeah. Which is crazy. That's crazy. Foreshadowing right. for, for the late future. <laughs> um, so my next note kind of goes like this is I do feel bad for them for this for you said okay they're students they're first years alright this goes along with Hagrid being I, again Hagrid's my top five characters I love him to death but they have to he is coming. not only a, a uh, an alcoholic but he's the worst authoritative figure at this school you keep a dragon around you, know, you want to keep a dragon where students will be around yeah, that's how, you know students will be around mm-hmm. there but then you gotta realize you gotta give them up so you know we gotta meet Charlie's friends you a teacher are allowed to be out whenever the heck you want it actually affects his job you would think Dumbledore would come down and be like hey you haven't been doing your job right but have like it's been Christmas <laughs> oh yeah no no Christmas trees because they're all burnt to the uh, ground Hagrid would have found out literally right. the next day but here's my thing though you <laughs> you're allowed to walk around school whenever you want you know what I mean blah 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 blah, blah. why not borrow Harry's invisibility cloak put it over the cage and bring Norbert yourself why have two first year students carry a dangerous animal at out you know also, at night Norbert be, be out of bounds noise? Yeah, true. <laughs> but be out of bounds at night to first year students with a dangerous creature going to the astronomy tower. You are a an adult authoritative figure. Literally. You could have grabbed a visibility cloak, threw it over the cage, held the cage, and brought him yourself. Like why I have two that that's the thing that drives me nuts about Hagrid. With all these iron theories, he has these children do these dangerous tasks when he could have easily done them himself and set them himself and done, done a lot less. Like, they get in trouble here, they get detention. He could have met them at Hogsmeade and been. Right, that's what I'm saying. Just why even go off school grounds? Don't even go towards the castle. Go to Hogsmeade and do it. But, like, you instead risk these two kids not only safety, but then they get detention for it when I you mean, literally could have done it yourself. It was written the way it was because, like, if they didn't. Then the things no, we're yeah. about to hear it's in a plot the next, point. It's in the a plot next couple point. chapters right. wouldn't have happened. It's a plot point. I'm just saying, you know, from a, just I'm saying, from an outside perspective, it's like, why would you even have, why would you even get there? <laughs> They're students. They're first year. It's yeah, crazy. Right? You want to have Like, I was idea. scared. When I was that young, I'd be way too scared to do that, to, <laughs> to, to break rules. Come on. Okay, oh, Hermione. Yeah. Well, I mean, just like to that extent, though, like, I I don't want to get, like, you've already, he's already almost been expelled in his first week there. Like, now you're going to keep doing these crazy things. Like, you really want to go back to Dursley's for the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. So, you want to go to, to uh, smelting? No, not smelting. The other one's uh, St. Brutus's. I think they actually does. St. Brutus's I think Center for... Time, doesn't he? No. He does some at the private, the public school, but not St. Brutus's. Okay. So, this is a short uh, chapter and a short episode. Before we call it off, uh, I'm going to go over some facts about the Norwegian Ridgeback, which I will, again, post on our Twitter, this link. Um, but just kind of some information. I'm going to run through some information about the Norwegian Ridgeback. Um, this isn't specific to Norbert, I think. Maybe it is. No, it just says Norwegian Ridgeback. So let's see. So Norwegian Ridgeback is a dragon native to Norway. Go figure. Uh, it's typical habitat is northern mountains, and it's said to physically resemble a Hungarian horntail. So there you go. That's why it's very thinking. much like a Hungarian horntail. Okay. So, uh, 1991, Hagrid gives one from a stranger at a pub. Which, never mind. <laughs> I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna. This is like the second time. Again, run into a stranger. I and some Questionable things. Yeah. So at a stranger in a pub, and he tries to raise it, but things escalate, and then obviously the crew get uh, detention. Harry. Which is funny because in the movie it's Ron and Harry, right? Or Ron, Hermione, and Harry, isn't it? In what? The movie? Ron's there. In, in the, the movie, movie right? Mm-mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, Neville, no, Neville, wait, Neville, Harry, Hermione, I don't remember, maybe it is Harry, Hermione, I gotta watch the first movie again, Draco Off, okay, maybe you're right, anyways, uh, d -d 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 it resembles on Green Horn Table, except for the black ridges on its back, the broader texture in its scales, and its less hostile attitude, <laughs> so that's probably why they were... Safer because there right. been any other right. dragon. They that's less hostile, throw. though. That's just scary to know how hostile a hungry horn tail is. Oh, excuse me. Oh, it's got venomous fangs, obviously. Oh, its choice are large. Oh, it's got venomous fangs. Yep. That's it's why food... uh, Ron's <laughs> right. finger swelled. Its food choice is large, am large mammals, including water mammals, which is unusual for a dragon. And its eggs are black. Uh, and they they develop the ability to shoot flames earlier than any other breeds. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, what? Uh, female Ridgebacks are generally more ferocious than males. Oh, there you go. And Which is, because at one point they, in the book, we forgot to just, uh, tell you guys about, um, well, Her, Hagrid wouldn't let them in because he said that, uh, Norbert was going through a difficult, uh, time. Well, he thought Norbert was a boy the whole time. He didn't learn until later that Norbert's a girl. Right, right. But I'm saying that, like. Even, like it's just funny that like you that's probably what would have given it away is that like right. Norbert is being a little aggressive right and the last but not least it is ranked five X's in the uh fin the min classified five X's by the Ministry of Magic which is uh these creatures are known wizard killers and are impossible to train or domesticate so that's why they got to get rid of them and that's why. Charlie Weasley has bruises and yeah. cuts and burns all over his hands. This is what not. Wow, so this is, wow, this might be our shortest episode ever. I mean, there's not a lot that happens. I mean, there are a yeah. couple of important things. Like, yeah. um, there's not a lot of different things happening, but important things happening. Like the astronomy tower kind yeah. of again. foreshadow. Right, and again, basically, literally this entire chapter, and these are always kind of the shortest chapters, if you notice, the entire chapter is just a plot point. Nothing that happens in the chapter is long-term relevant, except for the fact that it plays a, it allows a larger role to happen. Like, nothing with Norbert is significant, because he's literally, well, Norberta, Berta is literally gone, and then never, I mean, you hear about her one more time, but she's not in the series again. That she doesn't come back and save them or anything. And so that entire part is pointless other than the fact that Malfoy catches them and well, they Phyllis get caught. Them. Well, Malfoy, like, discuss, like, Malfoy gets busted and then they get busted and get attention. But, like, literally, like, if you think about it, just saying, you know, I like this chapter, don't get me wrong, but you could take this entire chapter and put it in one sentence and have the same effect. Like, right. oh, the kids decide, decide to search for Nicholas Flamel again or something. And the librarian get busted by Philip, so they get attention. Done. Right. Chapter is gone. Whole chapter cut out of the book. But it's interesting. The other thing, it's interesting. It adds more flair and flavor to the series. Shows how Trunk. But that's why. Is. Right. But that's why I think it's so short. A lot of those chapters that are just plot point chapters are short. And the detention will play a role in our next chapter. Oh, a huge, well, huge role, yeah. It kind of ties, starts tying everything together. Um. But anyways, that's it for the chapter, guys. Uh, let's gonna do our usual plugs, and we're gonna let this be our short episode for the for the week. Um, but again, you know, you can find us on Twitter at Hedwig's underscore Army, Instagram at Hedwig's Army, Facebook we have a Hedwig's Army YouTube page. Um, anything I'm missing? Our Discord server. Matter of fact, like I always say, go to www.hedwigsarmy.com right now as we're talking, and you can literally. Go do anything from contacting us to joining our server to uh, becoming finding a patron. Out a little bit about us. Yeah, finding out a little bit about us, too. Answering our question of the week. You can find our chapter episodes there. If you're like, I really want to look for a specific episode, but I also want to send them an email real quick. Go there, contact us, pop over to the episodes tab, grab an episode, and start listening. Or if you have theories or things that we didn't point out that right. we thought were more significant. Yeah. Contact us content. literally then. You can just contact us and say, hi, we hate your podcast, but, <laughs> <laughs> or, but you gave us a listen, so we appreciate it anyway. Whatever you want. I Hopefully mean, if you're going to do that, that yeah. uh, Hopefully. maybe go to iTunes. And, yeah, give uh, us five stars and be like, you know what, the podcast isn't the best, but these guys are nice, so we should help them out. 
because that um, that really does help us. No, yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Grow as a channel, I would say that's the no, the biggest thing. If you can't become a patron on patreoncom army for as little as one dollar a month, uh, then what you can do to help us, if not just as much, if not more, is take one minute, sixty seconds out of your day. I know you got to sign in to your iTunes account, but go to iTunes, find it. If you're not already on there, find us on iTunes. Leave us a rating or review. You can literally say mischief managed. There you go. You can say, you know, anything you want. My favorite color is blue. The sky is orange. Whatever you want. Uh, and just leave us, you know, hopefully five stars. Um, because it helps us grow. It helps us raise us up the charts. It helps advertisers find us, which we finally have one of those. So that if you're not able to give us money, which we don't expect, we don't. You know, we appreciate literally you just listening. If you just want to listen and be like, I don't want to help these dopes in any way. I just want to listen to their <laughs> their podcast every week. That helps us. That's enough. Um, but if you... Because that lets us yeah. know like, hey, what we're talking about right. interests people. But if you want to help us get a new mic, a new system, a laptop, a better recording area, uh, a mixer so that we can have our own mics so that you don't know, have me loud and Trevor softer, um, <laughs> then, and you can't... <laughs> Uh, become a patron for one to ten dollars a month then give us itunes reviews so that other people can give us their money <laughs> um advertisers and whatnot so we can continue growing the podcast again www.hedwigsarmy.com we have a discord server too that's growing we just started it up it's live now you can join there and chat with us or chat with other um friendly fun harry potter fans we might not be on all the time but we will uh soon i think uh, be starting a uh, a channel where we'll be live. You get to hear us on the podcast, right? Yeah, we'll be. So basically, what it is is, if you're a patron, I think it's a tier two. Don't quote me on that. Um, tier one or two, not not anything higher than that. Um, then you will be able to go into the server so that when we're recording, obviously you won't hear this right away. But when we're recording, you will be able to. Hop into the voice channel of our Discord server for patrons only and listen to us live while we're recording. And then you can also hop into the chat uh, version. I forgot what it's called. I have to look it up and let you guys know. Um, you can hop into the I chat. It's a room of requirement. Yeah, I think it's room of requirement is the voice channel. Room of requirement chat is the text channel where you can type and talk to us in that channel uh, while you're listening to us. So, so we'll get this actually right. interact with so you. So live and, commentary. Yeah, basically. yeah. And you'll get to hear us um, occasionally point out, like, if somebody's got a real good point. We're like, oh, hey, yeah. And uh, right. shout you out. We'll be like, yeah, so this, 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 this. And then someone will be like, you're you're dumb. It's actually this. We're like, oh, you know what? This guy's right. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> Instead of having you guys have to email us and be like, look, I know it's been like three days since you, your episode aired, but here's the thing. So if you could fix this on your next episode, you know, something like that. So you do a live. All right. I think that's all I got for this episode. So next week. Actually. Yes. Actually next, actually week. next week. Not in seven <laughs> minutes. Uh, we're going to be going over chapter 15. The Forbidden Forest. Ooh. That's creepy. It's going to be it's a gonna be, it's very just, this, important chapter. This scene in uh, the first book used to give me like the chills. It used to scare <laughs> me. So <laughs> we'll see if... if Looking at it indefinitely does the same. Um, but as always, guys, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for listening. And uh, thank you for being awesome, as always, as you always are. And until next time, Mischief, Mischief managed. managed. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to help out the podcast, please head over to iTunes and leave a rating and review. Also, please subscribe to the Hedwig's Army YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter at Hedwigs underscore army. If you would like to contact us, you can email us at hedwigsarmypodcast at yahoo.com or visit www.hedwigsarmy.com and head over to the contact tab. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Hedwigs Army. Every great wizard in history has started out as nothing more than what we are now. Students. If they can do it, why not us?